So he says in Mark 13, 32, which is the verse I was going to, he says, there's two verses as well, there's another verse. Says, but nobody knows the hour. The day and the hour. The Son of Man. Yes, the not the angels in heaven, not the Son, only the Father, right? So Mark 13, 32 here is establishing one thing. It's saying that Jesus does not know. If Jesus does not know, it's impossible for God to not know something. God is all knowing by definition. Do you agree? Right? Also, Jesus, you don't agree? I'm just, I'm just thinking, <laughs> you know how we have a, an ego? <laughs> yes. And a, and a sub ego, and we have, we have different, it okay. depends if you, if you think like that. No, tell we me what you different, mean. Different, you know, we have a subconscious and you have a conscious, and perhaps there are parts of, of you which you know, and there are parts of you which you don't even know. But that, that would mean, so, but, but still, it's still, if you don't know something about yourself, then you don't have knowledge as well. It's the same point. Yes, so that's true. You that's cannot true. be God, you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Say our brain knows where all our organs are, but it can't tell us where. He, okay, I wouldn't say our brain knows because you're given anthropomorphic like, attributes to the, to the brain there, right? So you're given kind of a well on a consciousness to the brain separate of it, it itself being the consciousness of you. You understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah, so c coming back to what I'm saying, this is not the only problem. Like for example, is anyone greater than God? Is there anyone greater than God? God is the greatest by definition. But Jesus said, my father is greater than I. How can he say that when they're the same entity or they're one or they, whatever he's God? How can he say that? And then he says, my father is greater than all, which is the attribute of God. So we say the father, who is ever called the father in the Bible is what we call God. Right? Yahweh, yeah. yeah. Wh whoever, uh, when the, the Bible uses the word father, this is the true description of God. Jesus is someone sent by God. Even Jesus said he has a God. So is he, is he just like a prophet, it's not the son? Yes, so that we say, for example, Jesus says himself he is a prophet. In Mark chapter 6 verse 4, for example. And in Matthew chapter 21 verse 11, people call him a prophet. In Matthew, in, Matthew, uh, in Mark 6 4, he calls himself a prophet, right? He was in his own hometown and he said yes, a prophet. He says a prophet is not. Honored excellent. Like so you know the Bible well, which is very excellent. I right? wish I had it with me. This no, 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 it's okay. I, I always bring it. No but, problem. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. It's with, the same because in, uh, yeah, in yeah. the book, you know where. Yes. 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 The phone is. Uh, no problem. So, uh, so here clearly Jesus claims he's a prophet, and clearly Jesus worships God. And you don't worship. God doesn't worship anyone. God is worshipped. When Jesus falls on his face, he prays the whole night. How can God pray to anyone? God is the one we pray to. You get the point? So this, oh, we're saying all of these verses show us clearly that Jesus was someone who is subordinate to the Father. Well, he, yeah, he's, he was sitting at the right hand. He's called the servant in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. He was called the servant, right? And he's and, and the, uh, the Bible says the one who sent uh, is less or, or is less than the one who sends. The one who sends is greater, right? So and Jesus said, "I'm sent by the Father," which means that the Father is greater than him. He sends him, and he's subordinate. He's a servant. He doesn't know everything, right? He says, "The Father is greater than one." How can I, after all of that, claim that he's God? How, how rationally? How can I do it? Do you get the point, right? So, but and, and so far we're talking about the Bible, right? So, our belief when I read the Bible. I know Islam says a specific thing about the, uh, Jesus. I said, let me see what the Bible says about Jesus because see where Christians are coming from. I was surprised that the Bible is more supporting the Islamic narrative than any other text, you know? <laughs> so I guess it would kind of make sense if Jesus wasn't this God. It makes more sense for him. It makes sense for him to be able to die for us. That makes sense. But this is something else that we disagree with as well. That's the second thing we disagree with. As I said to you, we say it's, it's inherently unjust to claim because if he was still a messenger of God, it is unjust for God to punish someone who didn't do anything wrong for the sins of other people, right? So we, we say, the Quran has something very interesting, right? It says it, it, it appeared to the people that Jesus was crucified. That's why history will record that Jesus was crucified. Uh -huh. Now, we, there's many interpretations in the Islamic uh, belief. Some scholars, they say it's someone else would made to look like Jesus and he was crucified. There's other interpretation, but the point is people believe that Jesus was crucified, but we say God, because he's his messenger, he protects him. I quoted to you Psalms 91. Yeah. And I said to you, if you read that song that Matthew quotes, Matthew says this is about Jesus. If you read it, it says that he will, he's not going to be bruised, he's not going to be punished, no one is going to attack him, he will be protected. It, God will send angels to protect him. Which means that he, this does not make sense to say that he was crucified in the same time to say that God will protect him and he will not be bruised. 
Does that make sense? So we say people believe Jesus died. God, uh, Jesus ascended. So God saved Jesus by, by uh, taking him up, right? And we believe in the second coming as well. I forgot to mention that, yes, right? Yes. And then he will die as a normal human being. That's what we believe. He will die like a, a human being. But he was he was saved by the creator from the people who God did not allow them to kill the messenger of God. And now that would make sense because throughout time, God was sending commandments and he told the people to follow the commandments. It's not all of a sudden God said, you know what? Yeah, these people are not following commandments. I'm going to send my son, right? But all of the time he was sending commandments to the Jews. He was sending commandments to the Noahide laws. He was sending commandments with Prophet Muhammad. It's the same thing. He's sending commandments. We're saying it is the same thing. The only deviation here are someone who would say, no, no, no. Now Jesus died for your sins. Now, let me ask you this. Can it, is it just for me to be born at the time of Moses? And then Moses says to me, look, bro, there's 630 laws you need to follow. And you're born today. And Jesus says to you, just believe in me. And you, you go to paradise. This is favoritism. It doesn't make any sense. God is just uh, playing games here with the people. You're okay, you can go. You're not okay, you're not gonna go. That's not just. And actually, the Bible does say God has no favorites. Yeah. It so, 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 so it has to be the same test for everyone. It has to be the same laws that was sent with Abraham, that was sent with Moses, that was sent with David, that was sent with Jesus, that was sent with Muhammad. And Jesus, peace be upon him, did not say, he did not say he's sent for everyone. He said he was only for the worship of the house of Israel. Yes, he said I came first for the Jews. Yes. No, no, he said that he's come only for the Jews, not at first. Uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. I'll give you the reference. Yeah, the story yeah. of the Canaanite woman. Yeah. The Canaanite woman came to hear her son. He ignored her. The disciples begged her. Then he said, I've not come except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then then she uh, then I do not he said I do not give the bread of the children to the dogs. Then they said she said the dogs eat the, the crumbs of the table's master. And then he said, You have all, 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 all right. So this was the teachings of Jesus. He said, I've not sent to everyone. Even his disciples in Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, I believe, or 10, 5, one of the two, he said to the, all the disciples, he said, he said to the all 12 disciples, do not go to the Gentiles. Gentiles are the non Jews. Yeah, yeah. He said, but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But there is a verse here where the Christian will say, some Christians, yeah, I'm playing, you know, uh, the other side as well, right? Some Christians will say, Jesus said the Great Commission, baptize in the name of yes. the Father. All right, that's what he would say. To, to yeah. Samaria, Judea, I will, I, you would say there is scholars who said this verse is a fabrication. I'll tell you why. Okay. Why is the fabrication? Will the disciples of Jesus disobey Jesus? Will they disobey Jesus? Well, I mean, they did. No, all of them. Will they disobey? All of them will disobey Jesus? But they, as in, they did. Where? Uh, Peter, you're talking not, about Peter? Do not go to sleep. Yeah. Stay awake. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, we so, 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 no, no, but, but as in, as I'll, in they disobeyed. I'll explain to you why it wouldn't make sense, right? All of them uh, uh, disobeying him in the baptism. So if Jesus said baptize in this way, will all of them baptize in a different way? Does that make any sense? Would it make any sense, is it? Jesus taught them, baptize in the name of the Father. If they all baptize in a different way, that doesn't make any rational sense, does it? So there is not a single disciple that baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All of them did it in the name of Jesus. All of them. Look all over the Bible. I'll challenge you. You're not going to find a single disciple. Yeah, yeah, what, I'm which thinking, shows. I'm looking, I'm yes. Uh, think, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying to you. This is the evidence why some scholars said this verse cannot be true. Because if it were true, they would all be going around baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus told them to do that. Right? It wouldn't make sense that none of them ever baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? So coming back to what we said, Jesus sent his only sent to the Lost Ship of the House of Israel. Right? Which is Muslims believe. Allah says in the Quran, وَرَسُولًا إِلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ right? And a messenger to the children of Israel. So Allah says that He sent to the, to the children of Israel specifically, not to the whole world. Right? So that's the only difference between Him and Prophet Muhammad and the other messengers. That in the past, Allah sent messengers to, to specific people. In the end, Allah sent the last and final messenger. After Him, there will be the age of communication. It's easy for one message to spread to everyone. But in the past, it's very, it's impossible for one messenger to go all over the globe to send the message, right? But today it would make sense. So it makes sense for Allah to send the last messenger, or for God, Allah is just another term for God, to send the last messenger for everyone, right? So this is the Islamic paradigm, yeah? There is one creator, he's not like his creation, he doesn't have children. You don't believe in the idea of children of God, that's another <laughs> thing I want to say. Because oh, the, well, that's, that's a whole different thing. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because the idea, look, child, was metaphorically used in the Bible. It says, blessed be the peacemakers, for we shall be called the sons of God. Adam is called 
the Son of God. But we, they are the sons of God. Yes. Not the son, the beings. son of God. No, no, sons of God, which is angels. The course. angels, yeah, it's yeah, used. Yeah, yeah. It's used for it's it's used for the angels as well, yeah, yeah. and it is used for specific individuals like Adam. For David, it's called the begotten Son of God in Psalms chapter two, verse seven. Because some people say he was the only begotten Son of God. Say, no, no, the, read the Bible, Psalms chapter two, verse seven. The Lord, I I I declare the decree. The Lord said to me, "Today you are my son. I have begotten you." This is what David is saying in, uh, in Psalms chapter 2 verse 7, right? So what we're saying is this idea of son of God was a metaphorical thing because son either is biological, metaphorical, or, or uh, adopted. Yes. And Inherited. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And definitely he was not biological. God did not get, become pregnant for nine, <laughs> nine months, right? And he was not adopted. God didn't say, I adopted Jesus, right? So definitely it was a metaphorical sense when you say Jesus is the son of God. So we say son means that God takes care of you. God looks after you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? If you if you also believe in the um, in miraculous birth of Christ, yes, we do. Yeah. Why? Why? Why so? Who is the father? Okay, excellent. Now the Quran answers this point. Okay. Deals with this point, right? The Quran says, right, which is very interesting, isn't it? The Quran says the example of Jesus unto God is like Adam. Yeah. He, yeah. He created him from nothing, and he said, "Be and it is." Yes. He created him from dust, and he said, "Be and it is." Why is Allah saying there? Allah is saying, "Look, if you think there's something unique about Jesus because he had no father, Adam had no mother and no father. So if I worship Jesus and make him God because he doesn't have a father, it's someone who's more worthy of worship, which is Adam. He had no father, no mother. So it's a miracle that God created Adam like this. It's also a miracle for a prophet like Adam that God creates Jesus." to the father. Make sense? Not only that, but there's also Melchizedek. Yes. Who had no genealogy, which, a mother and a father, you know. Which the Bible is very obscure about. Yeah, yeah there's, no, there's no description. No, no, no. no. It's Someone a, called Melchizedek. Prophet. who's still yeah. contemporary to Abraham. He lived at the time of Abraham. And the Bible says... He's a high, he, high priest. Yeah. The Bible calls him a priest and it says he has no, uh, no genealogy, no mother, no father, no end of days, no the, the beginning of time. It's very abstract. Is that, is that meant to be like the Holy Spirit? There's no explanation. No, it's definitely it's, not the Holy Spirit. It's very, no one really knows. Yeah. But at least from what I've studied. So, so the point is, we're saying, look, you have you have someone else? Melchizedek. 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 He's mentioned in... M -E -Z -Z. He's mentioned in Exodus chapter 7, I think. Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 7. Hebrew chapter 7. He's mentioned in Hebrew chapter 7. So, so coming back to that, so he's saying, even I give you an example of Adam, also giving you the example of Melchizedek. So you being born miraculously does not make you God. It's a miracle that unique to you. Like like Moses had his own unique not, miracle. Not God, sorry, as in the son of God. That's, yeah. that's what was, I was asking. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're saying, yes, if you mean son of God metaphorically, but God takes care of you, no problem. But why we say don't use that term? We say don't use that term because it causes confusion today. People think literally God has a son, this and that. So Islam teaches you not to use that term, right? actually uses it, it's a, Quran says that this is something is kind of an insult to God. Because the creator, if you say he has a son, then there has to be some sort of need. Because look, the son, you, you have birth, you have children, why? Because you have a need for love for having children, or to protect you when you're old, or to leave your inheritance for, or to remember when you die. All of it are weaknesses, right? That's the only reason people have, really have children. For purposes. Like what? If you believe Something that. you cannot do on your own, they do on your behalf. It's still a weakness. I guess, yeah. So we're saying God does not need children. Does not need uh, daughters and this and that. Because he's all powerful, right? So when you say he has a son, you're kind of in a way degrading the level of God. That's why Allah says glory be to him. He does not take a son. Right? So this is the Islamic perspective on, on, this, on this issue. And as I said to you, look, if you link the Bible and the Quran, it would make sense. If you try to read the Bible in this lens that Jesus was a prophet, a messenger sent by the Creator, it would make sense. Now, Prophet Muhammad as well, I said, if you read the, these verses that we quoted, you would see that he's there, he's clearly mentioned, he's told that he's going to come in the future, right? So what does it mean to be a Muslim? It's to believe in all of the messengers of God that we mentioned, including Prophet Muhammad. Not to believe God has daughters or, or, or sons or all of that. 
and to follow the teachings of the messenger appointed to you. Just like people had to follow Moses at the time of Moses, Jesus at the time of Jesus. You have to follow Prophet Muhammad at the time of Prophet Muhammad. So that's what we're inviting you to. So we're inviting you to follow Prophet Muhammad, right? And that doesn't mean to leave Jesus behind because to be a Muslim, you have to believe in Jesus. If you don't believe in Jesus, you're not a Muslim. You have to believe in his second coming. You have to believe in his virgin birth. Yes. Yes. So you wanted to say something, yeah? Uh, about that, so the second coming. Ahead, Sorry. Yeah. You have Christ, you have mm. Muhammad. Yes. But if Christ, why is Christ the only one who can uh, confront the Antichrist in the time of judgment? We don't say he's the only one. We just say Allah. Oh, so that's what I, I thought you said that. Oh, oh no, no, no. I, I don't say he's the only one, but he will come confront the Antichrist. But we don't say he's the only one. See, Allah had a purpose for him. But there is, I think, two reasons for Jesus to come in, in the future. The first one is to show the people he's not God. Because there's billions of people today Billions of people today who are worshiping him, right? Well, uh, one so point something he's billion. To declare his, his. Uh, he will. He will. He will. Yeah, yeah. He will. According to the Islam teachings, he's gonna break the cross and and kill the the swine, the pig, to show the people that you should have followed the laws. I told you to follow the Father, not to worship me. I told you to worship the Father alone. That's what was the teachings of Jesus. Our Father in heaven, Allah be thy name. Be thy, thy kingdom come. Thy will. All of about the Father, nothing about the Son, right? So, Jesus will come back to clarify this point to the people. And and to kill the Antichrist as a, as a second thing to do. So he has two purposes, right? That's why he's coming back for that reason. So who is who is the Antichrist for in, in Islam? It's, it's Satan as well, yeah? No. No. No, no. So Sa Satan and Antichrist are different. Antichrist is a is a is a creature, is a is a creature, and uh, he's a human being. And he he's been locked, he's been living for, he lived for a very, very long time. And he's been locked in a specific place until yes. Allah releases that in the Allah releases we believe, we yeah. believe this also. It locked yeah. away for a thousand years, yes. at least for a thousand So that's what we believe uh, uh, about the Antichrist. That's, that's our belief. That's what, that's what, uh, what I mentioned in the hadith. Uh, the Tamim al Dari was one of the companions of the Prophet. They w got lost one time when they were on a ship and they got lost. And then they met the Antichrist. And the, the Antichrist asked them about Prophet Muhammad, about prophets. Did the Prophet come yet? Did this come yet? This will happen. And he said, when I'm released of my chains, when the time Time comes, I will be released of my chains. When the time comes, the Antichrist will come, basically, right? And then Jesus will have that mission to confront the Antichrist when he comes back, right? And then he will live as a human being and he will die as a human being and he will confirm Prophet Muhammad is also a messenger. So all of these things are bonus points to, to clarify. But I'll tell you something interesting. The Bible even alludes to something similar to that. If you read, I believe, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, okay. it talks about Jesus says, on that day, People will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, you've done many miracles in your yes. name. Cast yes. out demons in your name. So look, there is a... Says, I never knew you. Yes, I never knew your iniquity get away from me, right? So something no, very... We not cast out demons Exactly. In your name. But look, something yeah. very important there. The, the, what did they do? They call him Lord. We called you Lord, Lord. They do miracles in his name, uh. cast out demons in his name. Uh. So all of it are good things according to Christians today. Yes, yeah. So why is he delegated this, to this move away? This is that scares me the most in the whole yeah. Bible. I, we say... I read it all the time. Like, Doesn't it make sense what now? What are you saying? He's yeah. saying he is not Lord, and he will say to you. He's telling you in the end of the, ver uh, the verse, you did not do the will of the Father. You lawlessness. You didn't follow yes, the law. Yes, yes. So his problem with you is that you focused on him instead of focusing on God, the Lord. The, yeah. You called him the Lord instead of focusing on him, and you left the laws. Uh, Jesus says this. He says, "You come to me on that day, and you say." Lord, we've done many miracles in your name. We cast out demons in your name. Then he will say, get away from me. I never knew you, you, you lowliness. You don't do the work of the Father. So he will have an issue because people do not glorify the Father, in which we just said to you is the Creator, right? They glorify Jesus instead. They pray to Jesus instead of praying to the Father. They, everything, if you go to the church, everything's about Jesus, right or wrong? So everything is specifically about Jesus, nothing about the Father, the church. You know? uh, no, not necessarily. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Maybe we, we, we can correct me on that. Sorry? I think it's... I don't know. But Jesus is the gateway to the Father. I think they use Jesus is the way, the way. I think they're using that verse to say Jesus is the way. John 14, 6. Yeah. We agree with that. We believe in that. Because you cannot know the Creator. You cannot know the Creator. Is it okay? Can you give him some space? Uh, we say Jesus was the way to God at his time. Like, how can I know God without Jesus? How can I know God without Moses? Was Moses the way to God at his time or not? He was also the way. How can you get to God without Moses? Moses is going to tell you the teachings, he's going to tell you about God and everything. And how can you get today to God without Muhammad? We say you can. Without Muhammad, sallam, peace be upon all of the messengers. You need a messenger of your time to get to God. So we say that's why Muslims believe if you don't follow Prophet Muhammad, if you don't believe in Prophet Muhammad, you're punished in the afterlife. You don't go to paradise. Because. So 
much like that you need from about Prophet Muhammad? Yeah. Right, so there are many things that Prophet Muhammad mentioned. First thing he said that he's the last and final messenger. So he's the seal of the messengers. Each messenger has other messengers coming, right? But he's the last seal of the messenger. And then there are other teachings that the Prophet Muhammad to told us. He mentioned five things that are unique to him, right? So for example, in the earth will all made a place of prayer. So Muslims can pray anywhere, as long as the, the floor is clean. But Christians pray specifically in the church or the synagogue, right? So there are specific teachings. Yeah. We don't, but I, yeah. I Get that. Can you just say yeah, why sure. Muhammad is like special or like why we believe he's special? No, no, no. He's saying the difference between Prophet Muhammad and yeah. if you if you move the dog would be nice. Yeah. He's saying the difference between Prophet Muhammad and the and the and the other messengers, right? Yeah, yeah, like, why, so why why, why is he part of the story? Why did we? Like, why was he part of the story? You, I think you explained it. Yeah, yeah this, this is what I was saying to you. After him, there's the age, age of communication. It's easy for the message to spread to everyone. So he's the last and final messenger that is chosen by Allah. He's sent to everyone. This is the second thing that I was mentioning to you, right? He's sent to everyone, not just to a specific locality or a specific nation, right? So all of these are, are, are things, some of the things that Prophet Muhammad told us are specifically unique to him that was not made for, for other messengers of God. But in the end, the Quran teaches us we have to believe in all of them. We can't pick and choose, right? So I cannot, uh, you know, uh, and the Prophet told us explicitly not to com compare in a demeaning way between the messengers. Yes. He said, do not say, agree. yeah. So he said, do not say, I'm better than Jonah, right? Do not say, why is he saying that? Because people are fighting, comparing, oh, he's better than him and he's better than him and he's better than him then problems will happen. That's why the Prophet taught us not to do this, right? Not to be in a comparative way, in a bad way, comparing between the messengers. So we, we say, look, he's a messenger. His job is to give me the message. I should focus on God. That's the thing that Muslims have. The biggest problem that Muslims have is that most religions or all religions do not focus on God. They focus on people or other things. Focus on Jesus. Focus on, on Buddha. Focus on a country, India. They call Hinduism. The culture. Focus on everything but not God. Not God. Everything. Islam, the first and last thing you have to focus on was God. Muslim, what Muslim means to submit to the Creator. Muslim is to submit to God, right? Allah says, if they ask you about me, I'm near. I answer the call of the person. So Allah is saying straight away, I'm near. If you call upon me, I call upon me. He's closer. So Allah says in the Quran as well, He's closer to us than our jugular veins. You know, your jugular vein, he say, Allah is saying He's closer to you than your jugular vein, right? Which means He's so close to you that anything you need, Allah doesn't need a secretary. No one is, uh, please come and see God right now. Is He free? No. Go to God straight away. This is the message of Islam. It's the eight monotheism. There's one creator. Worship Him alone. Give Him absolute glorification seek absolute help from him. Do not do that to any other human beings, even Prophet Muhammad. A man said to Prophet Muhammad he said to him, what Allah wills and you will. He said, no, don't say that. See, what Allah wills, then you will later on. But don't put me with equal can with God. Can I ask right? question, brother? Yes. What's the difference between the, the, the Christian God and the we were talking about that all, all this time, right? Don't worry, we, all, the, all the discussion we were talking about that, right? Yes. So, so in, uh, you know, basically in Islam, there's no Trinity, and this is, this is a very basic thing. I know, I know, but I told them, I told them, no worry. I know what you're trying to do, don't worry. Can I just, can I just add something? You know, yeah. Add something? Because I, I'm a Muslim, I was born as a Muslim. Yeah. But when it came to this country, different Muslim religions, you know, like Muslims, Christian, we're back home, I've got village, all Muslims. So I was there because my family, I, I even used to lie to them. I used to say I'm fasting, but I didn't use to fast. Because I have to follow, you know. But then when I came here for two years, I was like, there is something. But I'm Muslim because of my family. I'm Christian because of Christian. But I said, there is something. I don't know what it is, but I want to enjoy life. So I lived for two years, like people doing lots of bad things, according, against my own faith, which is harmful for me, basically. But then after two years, I was thinking, what's my purpose? I need a purpose. And when I start thinking, what's my purpose should be? I should look for that being, whoever it is. We should have these perfect, perfect uh, attributes. Yeah, descriptions, you know. And then he should be, he should, if he give me his book, I should be stuck. I should be struck by what he has in his book. You know? mm. The moment I read the first verse, I should be like, wow. And for me, I, I, I read about Buddhism, about atheism, I read about a lot. I didn't go into much details. I read about the foundations. But I end up that Islam is the only religion when critically, if you criticize it, it will, it will shut you, it will shut you. Whatever you have, it will shut you. But you need to, to listen. Yeah, it, you need to listen to it without any effects of other people. You need to be neutral. That's Islam for this much. But if you have an understanding or any idea about Muslims, some bad experience or not, this is the book that is, you know what? Allah says in the first 10 verses, this is the perfect book for you. This is the meaning of the verse. And I challenge you to bring something like this book. And it's, 
I don't want to speak. You need to experience. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I didn't experience so, all of it. This is why I came. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. So experience. <laughs> don't, don't listen to me. Experience it. I swear. I, I didn't come to, to the bay. I and absolutely. Know, I'll debate. tell you something. I'll yeah, tell you something yeah, yeah. very important. Like, uh, because like, and, and, I, and I applaud you and I praise you for that you have very good manners, right? Because a lot of people, unfortunately, don't have the willingness to listen even, right? They wouldn't let you speak. If you, because why? They feel like I've been living all my life believing in Christianity. And you're, and you're right now saying something that maybe it's not the truth. No, 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 no. Yeah. Then the emotions come out, the it's defense hard. come out, right? I've been yes. through <laughs> okay. a big journey. I'm happy. That's good. I, I, look, I'll tell you the truth. Look, and and I will, simple, trust me, you know, I've been I've been talking. Man, it's simple, simple. Yes, yes. I've been Very talking simple. to so many people. I'll tell you, I spoke to so many people in my life. I'll tell you something. So far, you are the most knowledgeable Christian on Christianity that, that I talked about <laughs> on the Bible, on the Bible. When it yeah, comes yeah. to the verbs, I'm, I'm not saying that to praise you. No, no. I'm saying you. that yeah, because yeah. I see that the truth. When I mention the verses, you actually know about them, right? Most of them are. Where is this verse? Why is that verse? Why is it saying? Don't you don't have the knowledge, right? You have the knowledge, which means you put the effort. That which means it would be easier for you to understand what I'm saying to you. Well, that's you why get I the point. Uh, yes. Yeah. So as I said, look, we're inviting you to Islam. Obviously, that's our job. We invite people to Islam. And if, if it makes sense to you, we, you welcome you. It's very easy to become Muslim. Testify there is one creator. There's no one like him, the one I was telling you about. And to testify Prophet Muhammad is his messenger, right? And I'm inviting you both to do that, if you want to do that. And do you have any other questions for me? This is the Quran for you. You want another one for you?